everyone, and this is John Rollins with the Engage Youth Forum. Today is Wednesday, and we're excited to be with you again. We have a, a special guest. We have a couple of special guests on with us today, and then we have someone who's joining us by phone. Uh, we had a few people who are working, or we actually getting ready for workouts now for the uh, for the football season. I would imagine getting those weights, building up those bodies. So we're excited. Um, before we get started, we're going to ask you all to do some introductions for us. Just give us a little overview of who you are, and then we'll talk about our topic for today. Okay, I'll go first. My name is Willie Washington. I'm a retired police officer. I worked with games and police department for 30 years. Most of my uh, time with the police department, I spent in investigations and in, as a hostage negotiation commander. I think they gave me a lot of experience of dealing with conflict. A lot of the training and uh, experience I had allowed me to deal with conflict. Also handling complaints from citizens. I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and for the most part, um, I enjoyed doing what I did. Uh, and since that time, I've spent a lot of time after that working with substitute teaching and working with Mr. Rollins on his program. So that's basically... Uh, my my introduction. Hi, I'm Rakai Washington, a ninth grader going to the tenth grader. I live in North Carolina, studying to be a pediatrician and being a future basketball player. Well, Willie and, and Rakai Rakaya is it Rakaya or Rakai? Rakaya. Rakaya. She has a brother named Rakai, but she's Rakaya and brother's Rakai. Okay. Well. Pleasure to have you all. And then we had Tony to join us. Tony, you don't mind introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Tony, and um, I'm going to the eighth grade. Welcome back, Tony. It's always a pleasure to see you. You have a brother who has a birthday today, right? Mm -hmm. Did you treat him really kindly for his birthday? Yeah. You hesitated. You hesitated. <laughs> Well, again, this is the Engaged Youth Forum. These are issues that are facing the youth with answers from the youth. And our topic today, and before we get into the topic, I just want to remind you, this is a personal blog. This is a group of individuals who get together. We discuss some of the social issues that, are deal that we're dealing with in our society. But our approach is not to try to give advice. What we're doing is we're talking about things that we would do. We offer suggestions. We say that uh, this may work. Uh, we take no responsibility if you try it and it doesn't work for you, but uh, we believe that the information that we share on these settings uh, is actually pretty sound uh, input, and so we're just grateful that you would join us. So today, our topic, um, you all, I'm sure, what they're all saying, if you, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what's happening in our society today. Uh, several, maybe a little over a week ago, we had a young man who was, um, according to the allegations and according to charges, who was murdered by a law enforcement officer. And, um, and it has created a lot, of, a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety uh, among our populace. And uh, our youth are infected. Our youth are out, they're protesting. They are voicing their, their thoughts on social media. And we thought that we would come today and we have, again, retired Captain uh, Willie Washington, retired from the Gainesville Police Department, who specializes in these types of situations. He was a great community advocate for our local area. And so we thought that he would come and then give some input to our youth, allow the youth to ask some questions uh, concerning some of the things that they may have been exposed to, what they've been heard about, and then maybe help them to create a positive uh, relationship with law enforcement. And, but more importantly, to help them take appropriate actions so that they are safe and that they are able to go home at the end of the day. So with that being said, uh, Willie, I'll turn it over to you, first of all. And uh, as a, just give us some input from a law, enforce, a law enforcement's perspective. And then we'll, we'll ask uh, either Tony or Rakaya to, to maybe ask some questions about things that they've heard or seen. And then maybe you can give some feedback on it. Okay, I sure will. Um... Lately, we've been bombarded with several incidents that we felt like was definitely police misconduct in the way they interact with people. And once you see that, I think everybody has their own way of responding to what we've been seeing, especially when you feel like you are the target of those incidents. I think we all can agree that most Blacks seem to be the target of, of most of the things that we see 
uh, going on television, quite naturally, each and every one of us will, it would affect us. It would um, affect us emotionally, especially how we look at those things. And I think what we are more concerned is how do we respond to what we're seeing on TV? Will, do we uh, respond with fear? Do we, do we respond with anger? Do we, you respond with aggression or do we respond with violence? And I think you have to look at each situation differently. That's one thing that I truly believe when you look at the situation, there's so many ones that we can sit here and talk about, but I refuse to put them all in a lump sum and sit here and say, well, this is how we're going to judge it. This is the way we talk about. It. I'm a strong believer in each incident has to be looked at separate. Uh, let's start, for instance, um, the one with the most recent one. That's, that's the one that seems that everybody's talking about now. Even the Pope, uh, he has commented on the one with Mr. George Floyd with uh, his unfortunate um, demise there. Um, so when I look at that, when you saw that happen, we want to start from the beginning. Uh, when you look at a situation like that and you, you see it, first of all, you felt you, it's hard to describe, but I think each one of us probably felt different about that. But then again, once you get over that feeling, you, you, you kind of feel like, how will I respond to that? Am I angry or am I ready to, when I see a cop now start hating all the cops, do I throw a rock at him? Do I throw a bottle at him? Do I just go and talk to somebody? Um, me personally, I think everything should start off with a, a conversation by talking about it to somebody rather than you responding in anger, because you may do something that you are sorry for in the, uh, by the, in the end. So if you start out with a conversation about something, and then you try to understand why it happened. And from a viewpoint, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this incident and from my background saying, why did this happen? First off the bat, I saw that it should not have happened. And then I'm thought, thinking from, a, from my emotion, I, I actually teared up. When I saw that guy, then I got real angry. I sat back and said, you know, especially my position being a captain, I would have responded to that and I applauded the mayor, his strong immediate response, what he did, and I think they're very appropriate, very important. So by him responding like that, it gave me an opportunity to say at least something is being done. And when you're in a leadership position, when you see something like that, it's very important to respond in some kind of, with some kind of urgency. But there's still some anger. There's still some things I felt like has not been done on that. And then what I started doing is start looking at, for me, to seeing how other people would respond to it. Because I, I try to measure myself up with how other people respond. Um, and I'm responding the right way. Am I too aggressive? I'm too laid back or whatever. But for the most part, I have to say that I saw very, a lot of positive response responses, not just from blacks, but I saw police chiefs, I saw police officers, I saw public officials, but the other part of that, I saw some that didn't respond. And when I looked at that, I saw this is an opportunity. Whenever you see something, everything is opportunity for me. An opportunity to respond in a positive way or an opportunity to respond in a negative way. Then you look at people who did respond. Uh, you saw some police officers that responded. You saw some took advantage of the opportunity to step forward and say, okay, we don't condone this. We don't like it. Uh, these are some of the things that we saw. And then there was opportunity for some people to not, re that didn't take advantage of the opportunity to respond and say something positive, say something negative. And then there were some people that did respond and say something negative. I look at everything as opportunity, opportunity to do something good, or opportunity to do something bad. And, and, and some of the things I'm saying can apply to each one of those incidents, but you, and that's why you have to take them separately. Based on how that incident got started, um, I think it got to a point that it should not have happened based on what they've charged him with, I think they are saying a counterfeit deal. When you look at it, you saw the, the response. They had several officers there. You don't see that here in our community with that many officers responding to a situation like that. And when the officers got there, I think they assumed that um, he was guilty. They, they, there's no indication that they tried to verify anything or how serious the incident was. They immediately took him into custody. And uh, initially, they said that 
there may be some resistance. They responded to his resistance, but the video never showed that. Um, and then get into the, so I'm going to take a bold conversation, just run through this. When I got there and saw this guy, how long he stayed on this guy compressing his neck. Again, that just brought me angry. That part, <clears throat> I think I only watched that twice because it's hard to watch. It's, it's hard to watch. And I would tell anybody that has an animal, if you get an animal, a dog, and you sit that dog, you sit there, put that dog down, you stand on for that long, I can guarantee you that that dog would not survive. And if there was a person who had a dog like that and they witnessed somebody doing a dog like that, I can tell you they would respond with anger. Their emotion would have jumped down. They probably would want to fight that person. Because the dog wouldn't survive again. But to see another human being not to have that kind of uh, emotion or compassion to know what he is doing, you look at this guy's face, um, you saw what was, and actually, I would like to talk to him and see why, why did he do what he did? That would always be my first thing. But I was still at the police department. I wouldn't, I wouldn't condemn him as being a racist because the act that he did, I can't say his act was racist, but I know one thing, his act was criminal. So I don't want to put everybody in the same category saying all cops are bad or whatever. And that would be a fine example of saying that, God, why did you do that? And let him try to explain to me why he did do that. But then as far as me, I think I'm a little bit more level headed based on my training. But when it comes down to youth or anybody else, how would you respond? And I think it's important for me to understand how they would respond. Then once they tell me how they would respond to that, then hopefully that I can talk to them and say, well, I can see where you are coming from with that, but maybe you ought to consider this here. Maybe something happened that caused this here. But at, at least I would love for them to see how they respond. Every time I look at the comments on Facebook, you can see the anger, you can see different emotions. And, and I would understand, try to understand the different emotion because some people may have been related to the person. People of color feel like they're related to them. But when you see a lot of the, um, white folks and law enforcement people that actually reached out and, and uh, condoned this kind of behavior. It's kind of hard to say that it was just based on race. I would say the guy just happened to be white at this point. And um, sure, we can, we can say it's racism, but I would approach it from, from a different angle. And I would look at it and I would say, now it could be based on after I get to talk to this guy and find out how he felt and where his head was at the time. Then I would call it racism, but at least I would call it a criminal act. And I felt like the, the mayor did what he was supposed to do. He took immediate action. I do have some concern that people within that police department didn't respond in a way that the mayor did. And I think that they could have, and by them delaying their response, I think that brought a lot of anger to, to the community because the lack in response to um, an obvious criminal act to me. And uh, I, I would like to say I would base that on it being what I saw. I wouldn't initially put the color on, on it right then and there. He, I just I take the approach say he just happened to be white to do that because if it had been a black officer, I would have felt the same way to think he overstepped his boundaries. And mm -hmm. uh, and I can comment on others, but I would like to separate each incident. That's basically how I felt about that one. Even the guys that stood around and watched it happen based on the principles of the police department, they were fired already by the mayor. Uh, but I think people within the department, they can go ahead and act and take further action on those guys without delaying because that's what we've seen in the past that law enforcement or the criminal justice system have taken too long right. to come back with a response. And most time they do come back with a response, it's in the favor of law enforcement. So we've seen it occurring over and over and over again. So I think that has a lot to do with too, how people are responding to it. And uh, I'll open up for any questions or any comments that somebody want to respond to what I just said. Okay. Well, before before we get to that response, Tony, have you seen the video that we were talking about? The uh, officer who had his foot on the, the his knee on the man's neck. Have you seen that video? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So what? And, and I'm going to ask the question to Tony, but Rakaya, if, if you don't mind answering after Tony does, I'd appreciate that. Tony, what emotions did you experience when you saw that video? At first when I saw it, I was just confused because I was like, why would you put your knee on someone's neck for over five minutes because they 
the because of twenty dollars. Like I was confused, and also I was really mad because that's no right to just lay him down in the middle of the street while he's already handcuffed, and then putting your knee on his neck like he's resisting or something. That doesn't make any sense. And I was just really sad because it's 2020. Stuff like that happened a long time ago, and the Constitution says that we're all equal. We all deserve rights. So why are you, like, that's police brutality right there, and that's not right. Well, Kaya, what, what, are you, what, were your, what was your reaction? What are your thoughts? My reaction was anger because, like you said, it's 2020, and things like this are still happening. And there were other officers around him while the guy was on his neck. And you can hear George telling them how he couldn't breathe, he's not resisting, how he's going to die, and the officer's still standing up there. It takes three minutes for you to kill someone while being on their neck. And they can't say he was moving around and stuff because when you look at the other camera on the other view, you can see it was two officers on him, one on his neck and one on his body. So they can't say he was doing something out of proportion or doing something he wasn't supposed to do. So to me, it just seems like it's going to keep happening over and over until someone actually does something about it. And, and one thing, John, I would like to ask the girls is, uh, would they, when they look at this, and I know, but I think both of them said they respond with anger. Do you think the anger is to push towards all white people? Do you blame him more for, for, for his behavior rather than his race? Or which, what, what do you look at when you say an anger? Do you look at him as an individual? you look at him based on his race or you base, look at it based on his behavior? I look at him as his behavior and not staying for all white people or all white officers because on Instagram there's a white officer who goes to like um, black communities or the hood and check up on the kids and see how they're doing and stuff because I can't say it's all white officers because some officers are nice and some officers are getting on the guy about him standing on George's neck so I can't say it's all officers and put them as a group when it's only an individual doing something bad. Tony, what, what, was, what are your thoughts? What was the question? When you saw the officer's reaction and you experienced those emotions, did you attribute it to it being an issue of a white man with his neck on a black man? Or did you, how did you form those emotions? What did you attribute it to? Um, like, wait, like how, how I judge other officers or that one officer? Would you look at, would you look at his, like a lot of times it may be in a group of people and you know, a lot of times we're, we're, we seem to be divided whether we're looking at things from a black standpoint or from a white standpoint, or did you look at it from if you were that person and you walked up to that person, how would you feel? Would you, your anger be geared toward him being white or as, as a white officer? Or would you be so focused in on his act as his behavior? Because like I said, I don't think that's a normal person behavior. So if it's possible, do you think you can separate that and look at his behavior as being a mean person or or look at him as being a, a racist or, or, or blaming white people, period, for the way they treat blacks. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the thing that happened, not all white people, not all white officers are bad. It was just that his kind of character that I didn't like and why I was so mad. Not because he was white and he was hurting a black man. I mean, that gets me angry, too. But, like, um, like him being an officer, he's supposed to protect citizens and people in the street instead of just hurting them for no reason. And so that's why I got mad, but not all white people are to blame for that. And so it was just his character that um, he just, he's just a bad person. So, um, and that kind of segues us into the next question. As a result of that interaction, 
uh, many people began to protest. Um, and I sent out a video. Tony, did you get a chance to see the video that I sent? You did? Okay. All right. So you saw the protest, and, and please understand that from the Engaged Youth Forum, and this is to our listeners, from the Engaged Youth Forum, we, we being the individuals participating in this, this conversation, as well as Motivate You of North Central Florida, we are not associating the behavior that's on the video, the behavior that we're seeing on social media with law enforcement, the, the, the law enforcement community. We're saying that there's a lot of people who are stressed. There's a lot of tension there. And uh, even, even when I worked at the city of Gainesville as a safety specialist, one of the statements that I made to our law enforcement community was you have an obligation to go home at the end of the day. So you have to take care of yourself. But there's some people there who don't care about you the way that you care about you. But now that you do have, you've accepted a position, you've accepted a, a, an employment, and you are going to be probably held to a different standard than the average citizen. So now that we have the process that are taking place and you all have had a chance to see the video talking back to our, our people on the call, you've had a chance to see the, the video. How do you feel that you should react to get your word out, to express that frustration to, to express that anger, but do it in ways so that you maintain a positive relationship with the law enforcement community. Where Kaya, I'll ask you first, and then I'll ask Tony uh, to give your opinion. And then we're asking from a youth, a young person's perspective, how, how can you vocalize your frustrations, but do it in a way at the same time where you continue to show respect to the law enforcement community and for the work that they do? The anger in me is not the anger where I would want to go out and kill a white cop or kill a cop in general. It's the type of anger where they should want to hear us from our point of view and how we feel about it, but instead, they're not wanting to do that. It's the anger in me that I want to protest on why, because as you can see, there's more black people dying from officers than white people dying from officers. And that's what they don't realize. They seem to realize they officers are supposed to protect the community, not killing us every other day. Because it's like they don't care what they what we think. Just like if we wasn't out protesting, the guy who did that killed George he will not be facing any charges. Had to unmute myself. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> how can you use your voice in a proactive way, uh, but still get your message across? Um, I would like do a protest, like a peaceful protest, not like a riot or like vandalizing Target. And um, like if, but because, like, my parents probably won't let me go outside and do protests since I'm 12, uh, I'd probably just do something like social media because, like, I'll just film videos on how I feel, like TikTok. Like, lots of people are doing that. So I can get my word across by doing that. Okay. So, um, so now, what question do you all have for Mr. Washington or, or Mr. Willie? Um, that as a as a person who spent a career in the law enforcement community what questions do you have for him that may be able to so you you want to be heard okay what do you want to hear what what are, what are the things that you would want to have someone in the law enforcement community here tony um uh have you like um, ever seen someone being like a victim of police brutality, like on the job? Have you ever witnessed police brutality? Have you ever oh, witnessed oh, yeah. an officer is using excessive force? Yeah, several, but not 
games we've got to understand uh, is I think we're such a diverse um, community here that we, we do better than most communities. I've seen certain things that um, I felt that the officer used misconduct uh, and, and the way things was handled with those misconduct. I'm trying to think of something more specific to respond to, but I think we had a pretty good system. First of all, we've had uh, some pretty good leaders. And I think it's going to come from leadership. When you got good leadership and you do find out that um, there's misconduct going on uh, or police misbehaving, it's, it's the responsibility of the supervisor and the leadership to respond to that. And I do believe that that has happened here in Gainesville. And usually pretty much um, in a way that it was with some urgency and we were able to deal with it. Um, um, I remember one that, um, I'm trying to think where it actually it did a, a black person. I remember one that was kind of minor but when the officer stopped the guy, they actually beat him up and they said that because he refused to get out of the car. And I think they got written up for it being excessive. But again, it was more like because the guy had a bloody nose when he went to jail. And more recently, if you saw on television where the sheriff's department just uh, arrested a police officer for allegation of misbehavior. And to answer your question, nothing like what we've seen on TV. I have to be honest with you, I never really saw that to an extent here in Gainesville. But for the most part, when we did have it, based on the leadership that we had, it was something that we responded to and I think responded to appropriately. Um, most of the time when we either have protests or we get involved in other things because it's going on in other jurisdictions. And I have to say hats off to our community leaders and the standards that we have here and what we stand for. But I, I wanted to comment on what both the girls said too, that I like both their comments is, it's not so much the, the protesting, but when they're allowed to, to voice their opinions and their concern, thank God for social media. I think a lot of people have been venting on social media rather than taking to the streets. And because a lot of things can happen when you take to the street, you're, you're putting yourself in danger and you don't know who's all going to come and join you on the street. Some people take advantage of an opportunity to come out and do bad things. And that's why you see a lot of the looting and the routing, uh, vandalism stuff is going on because everybody would not have the good intention that from what I'm hearing from these girls here, they, they want to, they're looking to, it seems like they want the better behavior of what's good best for their community and not to be, they want to be constructive and not destructive. So I like them saying where it seemed like they would choose conversation and uh, voicing their opinions on media or, 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 or coaching and that type of stuff rather than a protest. And I think that's a, uh, a good positive way of responding to situations like that. But, uh, and, but hopefully those two things is like I said, I just don't think that we, we see a lot of that in our climate, uh, in our community, but, but it's I think I, yeah, you, you mute, there you go. Okay, can you hear me? Can now, yeah. Okay. So, Rakaya, did you have any questions for your, your grandfather? No. Um, and actually, actually, we talk about things like this all the time. And uh, that's one of the reasons I had to sit in because, because she does. And I think, but well, you kind of hit on it and how to respond. And that's, that's one of the things that we, I think we need to coach our young people in how you respond to these type of uh, incidents so it, it doesn't get you in a position where it it ruins your future because it can easily get involved in something like that. If you don't respond in a proper way or you're not being coached how to respond, you're gonna, you see a lot of those people getting out, getting arrested out there just for participating and it may not be. And um, again, something can happen that could affect your whole future. So it's, it's always respond in a responsible way. There's several ways and several options uh, to do it, but I think the conversation and these type of things is the best way of doing it because again, even by talking about it, you, you'd be surprised how how relief it, it can bring just by sitting down talking to other people and hearing other people's opinions and a lot of those, uh, good things that come out of that. You, you, be, you begin to understand some things that you didn't understand and why you're feeling the way that you, you felt. But you definitely want the leadership on, on the other part because you can't you can't take it all in yourself. You're going to depend on the leaders 
full speed these guys here because you we really don't have any control of those guys. And I'm in a position like that now, and it makes me angry when I see bad leadership that they don't respond the way that they should. We can respond all the way we want to, but unless they respond in a way to take care of it, you're going to see that. Uh, and, and, and our main thing of it is, is we always talk about unity. We want to come together. So again, we start looking at, at it uh, separately or whatever. We're going to deal with it separately, and I think it's just going to only um, exacerbate uh, our feelings and how we respond to different things. So, so here, here's our wrap-up question. And, and Rikai, I'll ask you first, and then Tony, I'll give you an opportunity. Part of the Engage Youth Forum is not only do we talk about issues that are facing the youth and then we try to give answers from the youth, we ask the questions, we get, ask you all to tell us what you think is an appropriate response from your perspective. But the last part of it is if you had some peers, some friends or colleagues, and probably uh, that you would uh, have experiences with on an ongoing basis, you have conversations with on an ongoing basis, what would you recommend to them Given our discussion today, how would you share, what would you ask or suggest that one of your friends do or a couple of your friends do if they were put in the same situation and uh, so that they can come out in a positive, with a positive outcome? What would you recommend to them? I would tell them because I know a lot of them would want to protest. I would tell them setting things on fire and filling out stores and start up riots is not the right message to send. Because when you do that, it makes more targets and it makes them, it makes the officers want to go out there and tase people and make people and stuff like that. Instead of doing that, they should want their voice to be heard and take it up like to the mayor or social media for instance. Show, tell the people how they feel about situations instead of going out there for negative things. When they go out for negative things, riots and same things with fire starts to happen. Very good. Tony, what, it, what, what suggestions or input would you give one of uh, your peers? Um, if, there, if my peers, like, because like my peers, they talk about how they want to help represent the black community too. Um, like some of them said that they want to go to protest. So like if they were going to go to a protest, I would say like just in case like the police um, do see some people like misbehaving or they just misbehave themselves. Like if they have tear gas, like be prepared, don't wear contacts, have on extra clothing. And like if you're near like a grocery store or, or um drug store, like get get some milk if you do get sprayed with tear gas in the face because like um tear gas can really burn your eyes and your and like don't touch all over your face because that'll just make it worse and um if you do get like arrested at a protest um the one of the things that you do need to know like you need to know your rights because if they're like threatening you then you have the right to like be silent or like tell like um tell other people what happened and like always like bring someone else with you that just in case you do get arrested or threatened by the police then they'll be recording and you'll actually have proof of what they did if they did something wrong okay and like if you like um saying like your word on social media and like how you feel about it like try not to be offensive and know what you're talking about because lots of people are gonna come at you if you're if they think that you're saying something wrong or like um, if they don't agree with you. Very good, very good. Okay, so Willie, any last words? Uh, no, uh, I like both responses. I'm glad we had the um, hearing from their perspective and it, it's an uh, indication. I'm inspired that, and especially with a young lady there and I kind of know her background, that uh, we have people thinking about these things and thinking about how how it affects them and how to respond to those different types of things. And like you said, when you hear people say no to the law, that's very inspiring for to see our young people having that type of interest. In, in because, again, at some day when they get older or whatever, they're going to represent us and they're going to be out there and they have choices to make. And the more knowledgeable they are and in, in tune with these types of things, the last know they're watching it and, and finding different ways to respond. And that way, it helped keep them safe. And that's, that's what it's all about, too. 
knowing your rights, but at the same time taking measures to be safe. Hey guys, this is the Engage Youth Forum. And once again, we've had a powerful topic with great perspectives from our youth. Uh, I, I'm encouraged, you heard Mr. Washington express his, 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 his uh, confidence in our future. And I, I share those same sentiments. I, I, I'm telling you all that all of our youth are not sitting around and spending their entire lives uh, dis disconnecting with what's going on around in, in society. Some of them are educating themselves. They're trying to put forth the effort to be productive members of society. And we want to make sure that we're giving them an opportunity to voice their concerns. So that's the whole idea behind the Engage Youth Forum. Issues facing the youth with answers from the youth. And uh, Rakaya, you may not know this, uh, but Tony, you do. Uh, when we get ready to finish up, we have a saying that we say all the time. And the purpose for this saying is that in the event that you have not had someone to come into your life uh, today or last week to remind you of your worth, remind you of your value, we want to take that opportunity, give us the privilege of letting you know. Unmute, Tony. You are important. One, two, three. You, you are, are important. important. All right, this is Engage You Form. You all be blessed. We'll see you all next week. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.